playing the Ken Smith bass really changed my life and really not only made me uh, feel more like a professional, but it gave me a voice to sound more like a professional. <laughs> I started playing on on a, a Vox bass. Mm -hmm. uh, well, first bass was like this this bass, you know, fifty dollar bass made in in Mexico, and and uh, and I played on that for about six months, and then I got my my uh, my my uh, Vox bass, and it was like a red red bass, and then I got the P bass, but. I, I would say that I learned how to play on the Smith. That's how I learned how to play. You know, because the other basses were were student models, you know, and 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 the P bass, although 300 bucks, you know, I, I, I played, but I think my, it expanded, having a five string expanded the way you think about playing bass. And then to, the tone of it, because it's really, you know, if you really look at the big picture, it's not the oven, it's the cook, but man, it does help to have a great oven, you know? And I think that that's what the, the Smith bass gave me. And, and even when you listen to uh, I Will Always Love You, I mean, the bass is just really centered, warm. It doesn't, it does what it's supposed to do. It doesn't stand out, it doesn't hide, it's not, it's even. So when I play the high stuff, you can hear the actual notes, where sometimes on basses, you know, when you, the higher you on the register, it, sometimes it gets thin. And sometimes in the low end, it's muddy. In the, in the middle, it's just too mid-range, you know. Yeah. And I think that uh, that was one of the things that impressed me for a long time and why that was probably the only thing I played for a better part of my career, you know. I don't play as much uh, as, I, as I did before because that's all I did was play. And then when I started moving into conducting and arranging and, and even putting bands together for artists and, and that kind of stuff, it, it, it changes not your passion for it, but your opportunity to play, you know? Like playing, you know, like when John Patitucci played with Chick Corea, when he played that bass, it really sang, it really spoke to me. Uh, but I'm not uh, where I can play with, with Chick. I could play one song, maybe. It has to be a real a ballad. No, no. But, uh, you know, I mean, look, it takes... You really have to work at it, and I think the bass really lends itself to uh, to be, being able to find your voice. And then, I guess, maybe the last thing I have to ask is, um, what was it... So, it's kind of a complicated question, but, like, when you played with Whitney for... Um, I don't know how many how many years did you play with Whitney? Um, I was music director for ten years, but I did the showcase to help her get a record deal. So I would say probably from the time that um, that I started with her was around eighty six, and I was playing a P bass then. But then eighty seven is when I got my first Ken Smith bass. So I think from 87 until uh, kind of straight through until maybe uh, I had a couple of other bases, but I, uh, you know, I played all through Idol and then, and then some of the Tonight Show. So that was around uh, 2010. Wow. So, uh, so all around there and then you know, even now, I, 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 I play it more now than I have in the last few years just because when you, it's just like um, when you have something like that and you don't play it, it sometimes it takes going away from it and coming back to it to really understand where all the love is, you know? Like, like to say, you don't miss your water till your well is dry, you know, so then you go back to it and you you find some some more love and then people send me stuff you know that they find on youtube of me playing and i'm going like you know how i, I remember how that sounded and then you kind of go to it so it's, i think it's nice to just try to uh 
find some new new things, new ways to approach it, and and find new uh, renew your passion for making music. When you went from the P bass to the Smith, what, was it like an issue at all at first? Like, were they like, oh, like what is that? Were you said this type of sound, and then you switched the sound? Was that ever an issue, or they just went with it? Well, 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 with with Al. They never heard me play P bass. My P bass was the backup. Oh, so when I went out with Al, I was just like, I'm, the only way to play it is to play it. So I just got it. I don't care. Once I get out there and play it, I'm going to kill it. You know, and Freddie had been playing. The, 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 so they were used to Freddie's sound already. So okay. I was thinking, if I play that four string, they're going to go like, what's that little weak thing he's playing? <laughs> you know, so I'm saying they're used to that big sound. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to, you know what? putting on my big boy pants and I'm going out there and I'm getting busy. And I was like... <laughs> I was just all over the place. And one of the tunes we played with Al was the, uh... That's a b bad tune, a tune called Save Me. Save Me. Yeah, it was <clears throat> on, on uh, uh, the album. I think it was it was just called Jero. It's a purple thing. It had this... Uh, Cool. You just have some really fun stuff, you know, really beautiful. There's a tune called uh, Across the Midnight Sky that uh, that uh, Anthony Jackson played on. Oh, okay. he, he, he played the six-string bass uh, on that. Oh, wow. Did he play the, the Smith Six? The Smith Six, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I got to check that out. What you is it called again? Across, Across the Midnight Sky. Across the Midnight Sky. I, met, I only met Anthony one time. And man, he was on the session, and a buddy of mine, uh, Steve Ferroni, was doing a session with him, and I played uh, on a couple of records with Steve. He said, you know, you playing that Anthony Jackson bass, because I had a Smith bass. And I was like, yeah. He's like, he says, I got a session with, with, with Anthony next week. You want to want to come meet him? I was like, yeah. So I came, and they, do a t they did one take, and then they stopped, because he had to change strings. And then they did another take. Then he... Change strings, and he he believed that that the life of the strings aren't are long, so he would just they'd have to stop stop you know this is when run and take they have to stop because he 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 believed that you know, but the thing about it everything he played was so right even time and so I actually thought that if I bought a Ken Smith bass I would be able to play like Anthony Jackson <laughs> you know I mean that that's how how naive you are but you think again you think that uh, it's the oven so if I buy that bass. You know, then I'll be I'll be an amazing player, but that it's the work though. I mean, he's it's 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 the part of it is, is the instrument. It does help to have a great instrument. Man, he was just a very gifted dude. You know, harmonically uh, and tone wise, and even you know, I mean, there's never a problem with technique. Just clean, clean. See, so, yeah, I'm, wow. I'm a big fan. Play across the midnight sky, man. So this is it. This is an ad. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
So that's on a six, Smith? Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that gig for me was probably some of the best times I've ever had because at that point, I wasn't a leader on anything. I was just playing. I was a sideman, so I had freedom to just practice and play. And there's a balance. You know, there's a, a give and take. When you expand what you're doing or looking to expand your other passions, that something's got to give, like you're human. There's a point. There's a time where you have to sleep, you know. Right, right. So, and then this this part of of uh, this next, um, I guess this next phase, this next chapter for me, is is more is creative in another way, you know, where I can't, uh, you know, like the guys that play with me, they they play all the time. I have administrative stuff to do. And uh, arranging and, and talking to artists and and, and budgets and, and a whole lot of things that require to do shows like the Grammys or the Oscars or or the Super Bowl or Emmys, you know, those shows require. And then the competition shows have their own thing too, because you got to deal with each artist. And so if you're doing TV specials, I just did a Christmas special with Adina Menzel. I do uh, the Kennedy Center Honors, and so you've got everything from you know this year we had Earth Wind and Fire, Linda Ronstadt. Michael Tilson Thomas, Sally Phil, Sesame Street, you know. So you've got to deal with all of the teams of all the people, figure out what people are doing, what they should do, help them to, to what your job is to help them uh, get to the center of who they are and have a great performance. Not what I want them to do, but, but help guide them to where they need to be for that performance. Help find the right song, find the right key, find the right treatment, the right arrangement, the right the right instrumentation. I mean, it's a lot more than just showing up, you know. Wow. So it, it's a it's a very fulfilling, creative thing. But you know, I uh, I think you you have to put in the time. You can't be great at anything unless you put in the time. You know, you can't be a, a great son, a great friend, great nothing. It takes work. So and, and 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 I think that people tend to take this time around the planet, you know, this journey for granted that you're going to always be here, but you're not. So it's not um, just kind of going through life, but really taking in account all that 
is, was, and will be so that you understand your purpose that there's a lot of gifts that we have. You don't have just one gift, so enjoy them all, but really enjoy your friends and treat them with that kind of reverence and respect that you have. You know, I think we kind of take take uh, life itself for granted. So in, in, in turn, you end up taking your family for granted. You, you take your, your ability to even breathe, you know, on your own without oxygen machine for granted, you know. So I think that music is one of the highest vibrations on the planet. And if you're fortunate enough to even be around it and to listen to it, let alone play it, and then to play it with others and make music and create art, there's nothing like it. Thank you.